Ramble. This episode is presented by DoorDash. Use promo code SIT with us at checkout for 50% off your first order of $12 or more. Thank you to DoorDash, BetterHelp, and ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. We have a very exciting uh, episode for you guys today. We are talking about Jubilee, the art of jubilation. Um, Rainy has put together a beautiful document um, that we can dissect and dive into. I, my name is Maggie. I am one of your hosts, and I am joined by Matthew today. Hello. Becky. Hi. And Aria. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Do you like to celebrate things? I like to celebrate things. Yeah. yeah. I like there's. I like that there are little holidays to look forward to, but I, if I am not actively planning for it, sometimes I feel like the year passes by so quickly, and I'm like, oh, no, what are we doing for this? Um, what about you guys? Parties all day, every day. I love to celebrate. Party, celebrate party, girl. life's little victories. Party, 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 celebrate party, party, party. Tuesdays. I love celebrating yeah. on Tuesdays. Everything yeah. is a celebration. So, what is something that's too small to celebrate? Is there is there such a thing as something too small to celebrate? I don't think no. so. I kill a mosquito. Celebrate. That's one of the best celebrations ever. Celebrate. It's one of the biggest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really liked Rainy had given us some very thought provoking questions to look at. And one that really rang true with me was my parents love to celebrate every little victory. Mm. And my mom and I, or anything that's hard, if you do something that's hard, you should celebrate. So whenever I would go with my mom to get her mammograms, we'd go get a donut after. That's and a cute I still, little. Anytime I go to the gynecologist, get a donut after. That is so cute. Yeah. You oh know, someone's gosh. poking around in your uterus. Yeah. You deserve some sugar. I know donuts. You deserve Gyno some sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you need some Dunkin'. That's- did you guys ever do little celebrations with your family when you did, like, got a good grade or um, made a personal goal? Uh, maybe during standardized testing, my dad would always take us either for donuts in the morning, and we got into a habit of it sometimes too often that my mom would get to a point where she'd zoom past the donut shop because we always wanted to make it like part of the morning routine. Um, but either donuts in the morning or ice cream after school. Aww. Always sweet mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, so every day after uh, daycare when I was really young, um, we had a, quite a long <clears throat> commute back mm-hmm. from daycare to home and my dad and I would pick up crunch bars from like crunch bars yeah crunch yeah. bars you know those ice cream crunch bars oh, okay. from the gas station on the way home mm-hmm. that's cute I mean we just always got good grades so <laughs> couldn't celebrate <laughs> you always you, know? you can't no, celebrate I can't remember crunch. like any specific thing that my parents did for like yeah. grades and stuff yeah. did you get treats during speech therapy or after speech therapy it was like stickers okay okay mm-hmm. nice yeah. I feel like after after having met most of our parents, they're they're very um, uh, gracious with their words, Mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, I feel like all of your parents are they're very open and emotional, kind. Yeah, emotional Mm -hmm. recognition. Mm -hmm. Saying you know, your mom especially, and and actually your mom too, Matt. uh, Mm -hmm. Kind of, they'll come up and be like. I love X, Y, Z. I, you know, I just think that you're doing so well with this. And it's like, thank you. <laughs> like, I really appreciate the just, you know, very heartfelt, um, like comments, you know? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I always try to do that with other people too, when I like haven't seen them in a long time mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, you kind of walk up to them and you just give them like serious eye contact and like, serious really tell them how well they're doing because I feel like that really sticks with you. Aww, you know, that's so sweet. just little yeah. celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's Do you guys true. have it? Have you guys ever worried that you're an over celebrator? I don't know if that was in the questions, <laughs> but I worry that all the time for myself. Is there such thing mm. as over celebrating? I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh my God. I think whatever you feel like is the right yeah. amount of celebration. Mm. You know? Yeah. Jubilee. A fun. Jubilee. Jubilee. Do you guys have any holiday traditions that you specifically remember being very celebratory? For Christmas, we would always make um, handmade raviolis with my grandparents. Hmm. And then for Christmas Day, we would have them for dinner. So it was always like leading up to Christmas. That was a big thing. 
going over there and doing that and then actually cooking them and having the whole family and everything, big celebration on Christmas Day. So that's still a, a, a thing that we still do. You know, the tradition has carried on yeah. in my mm-hmm. family. So that's always reminds me of Christmas time doing that, you know. But for most of the other holidays, I feel like we don't have kind of a standing tradition mm, yeah. or a celebration. It's usually just always eating and drinking. You know, as oh, long yeah. as you're eating and drinking. Just over over consumption. Yeah. I feel like yeah. holidays are a sugar fest for us. Mm-hmm. Just sugar and chocolate. And uh, we make these things called dough gobs uh, for the morning of Thanksgiving and the morning of Christmas. And it's, it's, it's dough basically, gobs. it's, it's dough, it's frozen dough uh-huh. or you can make it yourself, but it, mm, I'm going to argue it's not as good. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's like frozen roads rolls mm-hmm. and you break off little pieces, roll them in butter and then roll them in cinnamon and sugar and put them in a bunt pan with a bunch of pecans and like monkey bread. It's, it, it is monkey bread. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we've always called them dough gobs. And so when my mother-in-law was like, oh, it's monkey bread. I was like, okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Fine. Um, Fine. But uh, so much sugar. Oh my goodness. Like it's like a, an enormous cinnamon roll. Um, and it, I, every holiday it's just over. Delicious. It's so much food. Mm-hmm. Mm. So much food. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have any, I feel like I don't remember any big traditions in my family other than like Christmas. We watch a Christmas story a bunch. Mm. Um, Keith and I always do um, Outback for our anniversary. Mm-hmm. Keep that tradition alive. Keep that blooming <laughs> onion. Yes. We even did it this year, even though he had COVID. Oh. So oh, we were outside. Out. We got takeout. I got my plate. And then our friend Mark was staying with Keith in the guest house because Mark's wife is pregnant and Mark also had COVID and they live in an apartment. So we adopted him for 10 days, (laughs) (laughs) 10 days. It was a very big adult sleepover. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I got my food and I sat on my little side of the table and then they sat plus side of having a big backyard. (laughs) They got to sit very far away from me. Um, Keep the tradition alive. Just blow kisses. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep the tradition alive. Yeah. Got to keep the outback alive. Yeah. How about you, Maggie? I don't think holiday traditions and your holiday family. traditions. I mean, definitely getting together with family, but for Thanksgiving, my family always loved going to the movie theaters to watch the new Pixar movie. Cause Ooh. usually it would like kind of align up Ooh. with Thanksgiving. That's fun. So we did that, I think many years in a row. And then obviously the last two years we haven't been able to, and I think they had like some release changes as well, but that was a definitely a big one. Um, But getting together, eating lots of food, spending time with family, like having that time carved out as we are like going into adulthood and like not as home as much is Mm -hmm. like really important and something I look forward to, especially since my sisters and I all live different places now. So it's nice. One one thing that I'm realizing that we are all kind of taking for granted is that time with family, Mm -hmm. you know, that like that is, you know, that feels like a celebration to me mm-hmm. uh, is, oh, yeah. is, is having the, the opportunities to spend time with that extended family, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, or even just time with like your significant other, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes when it's just Ned and I and the kids at home, we're like, this is nice. Mm-hmm. Like, let's, let's do something fun. Mm-hmm. You know, let's, let's watch a movie and just celebrate being here and being healthy and I don't know, happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot more celebrating when you're younger, like your parents, you know, for like each holiday, you mm-hmm. know, for mm-hmm. like Valentine's Day, you have to give everyone in your class a Valentine. That's true. It's like oh, St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, you have to wear green, otherwise you're going to get pinched at school. You know, like mm-hmm. yeah. things and like Halloween, you have to wear, you know, so I feel like your parents really kind of instill oh, that in you. And as you get older, you don't keep. Wait, you don't you don't give out Valentine's to everybody? Not anymore. Uh I get sad. I kind of miss uh, Valentine's Day from when I was in elementary school, just because it was like the entire class was like passing out cards. Mm -hmm. Now, as an adult, it's just like kind of weird. If you like, I used to come to work and like pass out like candies to my coworkers. I think that. And Halloween are like one of my two favorite holidays. And I think it's because holiday. it's candy. centered around candy. <laughs> yes. And cars. You and Becky are two of a two of a kind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like now a lot of celebrating is not having to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's a holiday. Oh my God, I'm so glad I don't have to Why work. Why is that I don't have so to go into true? Work. I don't have to 
And all you want to do is just veg on the yeah. couch. Yeah. Less celebrating. Yeah. More yeah, veg. Like that's become I will I will say that yeah. I would love to just bring back those childhood celebrations. Mm-hmm. You know, just make that the norm. <laughs> you know, because there's such a sense of wonder in kids when when you explain to them, you know, why you're going to every house and you're going to get candy, you know, <laughs> like they're like, what really? And, and everybody's in on it. Like mm-hmm. if you actually think about what that looks like to a child, it's like the entire community is having a party where we eat candy. <laughs> like, it's awesome. <laughs> It just seems so cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should do that for everything. There would be so much more joy. I'm down. Candy every day. Candy every day. I'm not talking about just candy. <laughs> Why not? Mm. <laughs> just Why joy not? and gifts mm. and small favors. For people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As, as you're thinking about that as a parent, mm. right? how do you give praise to your kids or how do you celebrate things? That's a good question. I wish that Rachel was here because no. um, she she and I have have like – she has a, a a different way of doing it with her girls oh. um, where she wants the girls to, I don't want to like describe it for her because it, uh, I'm going to describe it wrong, but she wants the girls to have like an internal sense of, of mm. confidence and achievement. Mm. Um, and I, I can't help but praise my kids, <laughs> you know, and, and, yeah. and I'm sure that she does too. Like there's, there's no way you can't praise your kids. Um, but I, I, <laughs> my mom actually told me this thing um, a couple of years ago. That's like it's like the five to one rule or something like that. Where for every time that you um, that you give somebody like critical feedback or or like a negative comment or something like that, that you should always give them at least five um, like positive things. Mm-hmm. And it's it, like it, it, I learned that a long time ago, and it just made me um, it just made me think to myself that I should be constantly complimenting people and telling them how well they're doing at things and how, yeah. how much I appreciate them, how much I love them, how much I, you know, just how like anytime that Wes, uh, does something like n- normal to his brother or like, you know, plays with his brother or something like that. It's, it's like, it's just constant. The, the mm. praise, it would just, Wes, you're being such a good big brother. Uh, you know, Oh Finn, you're, you're, you're like you're being a good baby. You're being, you're being a great a baby. baby. Finn, good baby. You know, it's yeah. I but I that seems like that's the way that you receive love and how you're giving love. That's as true well too. Cuz I know that you true. like to hear from your partner that's and true. your friends mm-hmm. how much of a good job that you're doing. So that's true. that's true. Yeah. I am am I just creating a cycle of <laughs> <laughs> Of needing to hear that you're doing well, I Positive don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I, a, I, I feel good when I get praise, and I feel good giving praise. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm sure that there are probably issues. There are issues with everything, right? So, I'm just going to continue telling all of you how much I love you, and how Aww. beautiful you are, and how. How much I appreciate everything that you do. And um, yeah, before I start getting too sappy about how much I love you guys, let's move on. How does Wes like to celebrate? Like, does he have a favorite holiday? Is it like his birthday? Presents. Presents. He's he just four. Wants presents. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every holiday. Right. Presents and present candy. Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Does he love President's Day? <laughs> Probably does <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, pro- because he doesn't have to go to school. Maybe. Yeah. 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 We yeah. Tr- we do try to save presents <clears throat> for 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 like holidays, yeah. but it is difficult because. Oh, I'm sure. How do you explain to a child w- what constitutes a holiday and what doesn't? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait till True. Christmas. You have eleven months. Yeah, you have eleven <laughs> months to wait till Christmas, and he's like, he'll actually say, um, he'll wake up and say, "Mommy, is today a special occasion?" And it's really hard for me to say no. It's a normal day, huh? That's a nice question, actually. <laughs> That's a sweet question. Like, can because, today be a special occasion? Can today please? be a special occasion? Can we have chocolate for breakfast? Yeah. You know, and it's like, no. That's one of the tough things about being a parent is that you kind of have to, like, I feel like I'm a yes parent in mm-hmm. many ways where I want to say yes. I mm-hmm. want to say yes to them. Mm-hmm. I want, you know, can I have chocolate for breakfast? 
why not? You know, <laughs> as an adult, I also want chocolate for breakfast. Yeah. You know, but. What's but, the worst? But you yeah. have to like kind of be the parent in some of those times. Yeah. I guess so you, you gotta be responsible no. and all that. You need yeah. your vegetables. You have to eat vegetables. vegetables. You can put chocolate on veggies. Yeah. Right. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. People use shampoos to keep their hair healthy, eat fiber to keep their hearts healthy, and use moisturizer to keep their skin healthy. But it's important that we do things to keep our minds healthy too. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or sleeping well. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. Here at You Can Sit With Us, we obviously love therapy. We love the fact that we could have someone unbiased and informed to talk to. The last two, three years have been incredibly stressful, and we love having a mental health professional there to kind of walk us through it so we're not so alone in everything. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, and it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can easily be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sit with us. That's betterhelp.com slash sit with us. Guys, I use DoorDash pretty much weekly. Whenever I get home from work and I'm thinking to myself, I really don't feel like making dinner for everybody. We'll get a pizza. We'll get sandwiches from around the corner. I absolutely love DoorDash. The only downside about DoorDash or really any ordering, food ordering app in my opinion, is all those extra service fees. And if you've ever ordered from DoorDash, but you wish you didn't have to pay delivery fees, you're in luck. Say hello to summer savings during the summer of Dash Pass from DoorDash. With your Dash Pass by DoorDash membership, you can save an average of four to five dollars on every order you place for delivery or pickup. Shine bright during DoorDash's summer of Dash Pass and get 50% off your first order up to a $15 value. Use promo code sit with us at checkout when you spend $12 or more. That's 50% off your first order up to a $15 value. When you sign up for DoorDash during summer of Dash Pass using promo code code sit with us. Don't forget that's code sit with us for 50% off your first order up to a $15 value. Dash pass benefits only on eligible orders that meet the minimum subtotal. Terms of- so we celebrate vegetables, you know, we we, we'll celebrate uh, like, and especially it's broccoli day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's eating broccoli day. Today is broccoli kale every day. Meal. But, but you know, you know, sometimes what we will do is we'll like, we'll put cheese on something and be like, oh my God, there's so much cheese. We love this. You know, yeah. just make everything a celebration. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's cute. How do you tell yourself that you're doing a good job? Like what is your mm-hmm. internal dialogue? Give myself a good job. Good job. <laughs> mm. Do you tell do you tell yourself you're doing a good job, Ariel? You look <laughs> perplexed. I think I kind of it means more coming from somebody else. Mm, I'm right? the same way. I don't I don't think yeah. I tell myself I'm doing a good I job. I don't think I tell myself. Well, Matt, you're rarely doing a good job. We all know I'm that. Always <laughs> failing. <laughs> you can always count yeah. me to tell you you're doing a good job. <laughs> I actively tell myself I'm doing a good job. You do? No. Oh. I don't think so. Um I have this habit though, like if any if I uh, encounter any like hardship during my day. It's just like I'll buy myself some sort of beverage, whether it be an iced tea or a coffee or a boba drink. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> um, but if I it's am your ever coping having mechanism a mechanism, is yeah, I'm like <laughs> a beverage. A beverage. Oh my god, traffic. Coffee. A beverage. <laughs> Which I mean, there's always traffic, so <laughs> <laughs> always making myself beverages. Um, but yeah. I feel like that's bad that we don't tell ourselves we're doing a good job. I know. Sometimes. We're all like making a mental really of something to it. talk about in therapy this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, maybe that's why uh, Rachel has, you know, is is trying to instill this idea in mm-hmm. in the girls of of that like internal uh, confidence and and pride. Yeah. I think pride mm-hmm. is really the because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I certainly it's. It feels strange to feel pride for oneself. Yeah. It feels like you should always be your best self and you, that is just the standard that you are Mm -hmm. held to. So like, why would you be like, yes, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. 
be doing, <laughs> which is be great and be the best version of myself. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, I deserve this. Yes. I deserve good things. Is there anything in particular that makes you feel like you're doing a good job or makes you feel really happy? I feel like if I've done a workout, mm -hmm. you know, I've eaten the right things for the day and I've like accomplished a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I usually feel the best about myself. Yeah. Are but you then a if one of those things person? get out of whack, then I'm like, oh, I just didn't do it today. You know, <laughs> it's a wash. Yeah. But, but you don't beat yourself up about it. No, I'm like, uh, I guess tomorrow. Tomorrow. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow is another day. I do love checking things off of a list. Yeah. I will make a list of things that I've already done just to check them off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's my internal way of saying, "You, girl, you're doing a good job. <laughs> I love that TikTok. <laughs> you getting it done. Do your part, Do you think your partners tell themselves they're doing a good job? So I know Eugene mm. definitely does not. He definitely like beats himself up. Yeah. He, needs, you know? he needs to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, Ned certainly needs to hear it. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've been married for long enough that I know, you know, when he needs a pick me up, mm -hmm. when he needs a pep talk or mm -hmm. something. Right. Um, and if he hasn't gotten it from somebody else, then it usually comes from me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta pick up your person, make sure exactly. that they're. That's what you're there for. Yeah. 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 And they're there for you. Mm -hmm. Gotta make sure that it's a give and a take. Yeah. <laughs> I heard like advice Keith, from Ariel. I feel like Keith doesn't need it. I think Keith tells himself he's doing a good job all the time. <laughs> I think he knows he's doing a good job. He's like, yeah, well, I did a good job. I did it. <laughs> I don't think he the has self satisfaction. Yeah, I think he could yes. gets a lot of like internal happiness. <laughs> That's fantastic. Where he's like, oh, I taught myself how to do this thing, and I'm like, That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> You're like instrument number 342. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Another synthesizer. You know play every instrument. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you give Zach a lot of praise? I give him a, a fair amount of praise, but I also feel like he has like a lot of, I don't know, praise. Like I hear him being like, I did good and pats himself on the back <laughs> a lot. It's that's like, great. I did a good thing today. So it comes from within him. And maybe that's just like how he was raised maybe his mom did a better job at i don't know it's it just comes from within him he's very uh i do think it's healthy to have that internal pride yeah mm -hmm. i you know matt and i are looking at each other we're like i wish <laughs> <laughs> i wish <laughs> do you celebrate things more or do you think zach celebrates things more oh i think zach's i think like if like zach could have it more. his way he would turn our house into like a mini frat party every single <laughs> evening if he could. That's kind of what his old place used to I know. Like. <laughs> I know. I mean, definitely like the last two years and just like limiting that has just like taken a toll. But we had my mom over for her birthday and he turned our house into like an entire, like he got more party lights and like mm. got a new speaker and was just like bumping. And we were all just sitting, just chatting. And my dad and my mom were just <laughs> like looking around and was like, even. we've never heard this is different. There's like karaoke, like lasers, like moving. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> fun. Dancing in the corner. And everybody's yeah. just trying to like scream over the yeah. music. Mm. Exactly. Oh gosh, so funny. Yeah. I mean, he wakes up every morning to like a dance party in the shower. So. Good for him. If he could have it his way up, it would be a party every night. <laughs> every night. Yes. What about party. you? I know Eugene loves partying. Eugene <clears throat> does like to party, but he is better about like going to other parties. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Because when I, and I feel like I like to host parties more, but then that comes with a whole nother Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. mental responsibilities. Yeah. Responsibility you and like stress yeah. and all that type of so. stuff. Yeah. You know? I feel like you are the consummate host. Consummate. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like you. it, it brings you so much pass. joy. Yeah. Just uh -huh. to, to like have people over and feed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throw a good party. It's Your always feeder. fun. Your feeder. Feeder. Your feeder. Pusher. Yeah. <laughs> Eat <Pusher>. this. <laughs> Drink this. Try it. So I feel like we do it in different ways. Mm. You know? Yeah. But I don't think that Eugene does it in a way that's like celebratory. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like it's different. Yeah. I feel like he parties like to, to relax. Steam, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his way of like being calm. Mm -hmm. 
less of like <laughs> celebrating that something's happened. I feel like he's already on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of like, okay, that's done. Let's do that. Eugene yeah. has always seemed like a connector to me where like when, so I, I feel like something that brings him joy is to really connect with somebody, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. he will, he, he gets so sucked into uh, people sometimes mm-hmm. where he'll just sit down with you and just be like, what's going on? Tell me everything. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's his way of, you know, he, he just gives someone his full attention mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and that just gives that, that, attention and that light that Eugene gives, it, it gives people so much joy. Mm-hmm. Zooms in. He does. Lasers in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes I just want to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to cook. Who's more of a party celebration person in the house? You or Ned? Oh, we, we celebrate in different ways. Mm. Ned mm-hmm. is a party person for mm-hmm. sure. Um, he's always been the type of person to get a second wind at 11 PM or whatever. <laughs> and you guys all know that I am not that person. Mm-hmm. I, you know, 11 PM is bedtime. Mm-hmm. There is no second wind for me, but I'm the type of person who celebrates the little things, mm-hmm. you know, in every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll crack open a bottle of wine for, for just like, it's 5 PM bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we made it through the day. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So why do you celebrate? Why not? Yeah, well, why? What does it do to you? What does it do for you? That's, that is the question, isn't right? it? Right? Yeah. Um, what does it do for me? It makes me feel complete. Mm. It makes me feel, um, you know, when I celebrate something, it makes me feel like I have something to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you've accomplished something. Or like I've accomplished achieved. something, or mm-hmm. that I have You're happy done something. something worth celebrating, mm-hmm. um, even if I haven't. <laughs> you know, I like that. I like that. How about you, Becky? Why For, do you celebrate? Why do I celebrate? Yeah, why? I love the sense of community that comes from celebrating because mm. we, our family, does a lot of like communal parties, even if it's just like. Even if Keith and I are celebrating like an anniversary or doing something, we usually will try and invite people over to celebrate. If something good happens, we try and have, you know, just celebrate. So sometimes just even celebrating being together, you know, Mm -hmm. this past weekend we had um, Lou Berger. I don't know when this is coming out, but they just had their show at Dynasty Typewriter, The Wizard of Friendship. So we celebrated with a little cast party and then the Stonefishes were in town. So we hosted everybody Mm -hmm. last night and we just celebrated like being together because they live in New York and we don't really get to see them a lot. Mm -hmm. So usually when our like friends' parents come into town, we have like a party. Just to celebrate everyone getting to know each other. Yeah. You, you took a plane flight. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> gotta celebrate being together. Right. Yeah. How about you, Maggie? Why do you celebrate? I think, yeah, I like being around people. Sometimes if uh, I'm in a work rut or anything like that, I feel invigorated to be around mm. people in, in a non professional setting, but it just gives you um, a reason to see your loved ones and your family and your friends. Um, yeah, Matthew. For me, I feel like it's it's like you're giving other people something so that it makes you feel better. Mm. Somehow, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you're giving them a good time by having For sure. a venue and food and drink and a good atmosphere and meeting new people and vibes, dogs and kids, you know. Dogs. Yeah, vibes. Yeah. Live, love, love, love. Celebrate. celebrate. <laughs> Everyone has to celebrate, you know. Celebrate. The institution of celebration. Um, have you ever been to a bad celebration? Mm. If you can speak to like the art of bad hosting and what not Ooh. to do when you're celebrating, because we've all been to a bad party. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. I think a party's all about preparation. Yeah. So you have to make sure you have everything Go there, off, like ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ready. So I feel like the places that I've been to are like okay, they like like there's. Like, is there a party happening today? Is there something happening? Am I too early? <laughs> like, oh, I see. Where is everyone? Like, right. You know, yeah. It's just like nothing's ready. They don't have anything. They mm-hmm. thought just having people over, but then they don't. They don't even have like water. You know what I mean? It's kind of right. like yeah. no food. You have no. to have something. Mm-hmm. It doesn't water. have to be like a crazy Spread. spread or anything, but just so people feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. I think if I've been to any like bad 
I feel I feel like if you are curating a get together, you uh, should definitely think about. You guys probably don't have to think about it very often, but the people that you're bringing together, you know, um, like most of our friends like each other, so yeah. it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, but if you're bringing together people from different, you know, maybe uh, d- different political spectrum, and it that could create some tension or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really have to like think about the people that you're bringing together at a party. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes it can be difficult with um, extended family. Mm-hmm. If, if, if some people are estranged or don't really like each other, mm-hmm. um, that can be, that can be a tough situation. The guest list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like there are definitely like party fouls that happen mm, go left and right, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to think if there was like a party that I've gone to that I was like, Oh, that really could have been better. But I think like Matt says, it's all about preparation. I think as a party goer and a party host, it should be about prep. So like, I think if you're going to someone's party asking what you can bring or mm-hmm. at least offering, not that everyone has to do something or has to bring something, um, I think that's a really good rule of thumb and is either just show up with something, something yeah, show nice up with something and leave it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's a very like college thing to like bring booze and then be like, well, there's two shots left in this or, you know, I'm like, well, maybe you could like okay. it. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. I think those are my, par- those are my big party files is not asking if you could bring anything and then taking Getting too drunk. Unused items, yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting too drunk. Getting too fucked up. Slapping your hose. I've been to a party where I've seen someone do that before. Slap like, the Stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa. They like, he like got in a fight with the hose. <gasps> Whoa. And then I don't know exactly what happened, but all of a sudden you hear a slap. And <gasps> the whole party's like. What? What? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> okay. When did like this a happen? Ball. A couple of years ago, like five, six years ago. Oh my <gasps> goodness. Yeah. Wow. How did you recover? I mean, it was behind me, so I didn't see it. I just heard it, and I like looked around, <laughs> and then they like ran. They like went opposite directions. You know, when everyone started to look, they like ran. Whoa, mm-hmm. no. that is intense! Yeah. Wow. So don't slap the hose. Don't don't slap the hose. Slap the Do hose. you guys follow any of the old? Like, I remember my parents were always like, "Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. Oh my god. Don't talk about sex." Like those were like the big things that would like cause a fight at a party. <laughs> Sex <laughs> is the first thing I talk about. <laughs> I was like, no, that's the icebreaker. I, feel, I pull a Eugene and I say, how are you doing? How, how is your you sex doing? life? Uh, have, no, you true story. <laughs> have you read? Have you read Clan of the Cape Bear? <laughs> <laughs> I would say my biggest party foul not is, it, or, or like that I think is a, the biggest party foul mm. is showing up to a party and there not being any food. Like mm. no food, no mm-hmm. snacks. Oh yeah. Whatsoever. And There's gotta be snacks. people are just starving. Like I remember parties early, you know, when we were much younger, mm-hmm. um, where I would, I would, I would be so hungry at a party that, and I didn't want to go up and ask the host and be like, do you have like some chips or something? <laughs> some chips. Like, um, I, mean, I would, I would just, apps, I would just like, order a pizza Yeah. and yeah, I would like, yeah. like go downstairs, scarf it and then come back oh upstairs gosh. and be like, <laughs> or if anybody else, cause like I also didn't want to be rude and like order a pizza to somebody else's party. Oh, I've done that. I've definitely ordered <laughs> yeah. food to other yeah. people's parties. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people aren't prepared and you know, I'm real quick with that Postmates button. Yeah. Mm, that's fair. I think another party fellow is not respecting other people's sobriety. Oh, oh interesting. yeah. Or like some people don't like to do certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel, some, I mean, people can be pushy like with mm-hmm. drinks or mm-hmm. so being a other pusher. substances and stuff like that. And it's like, let people do what they want. They celebrate their own way. Mm-hmm. They yeah. Do their own or like not having kind of other options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you only have beer and wine and they're like, oh. can I have a, a water? And you're like, yeah, I hear. <laughs> yeah. well, you <laughs> always got to have some bubbly water, flavored bubbly yeah. water hanging yeah. around. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a celebration for people who aren't drinking too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love having dinner parties with you guys. Outside of this friend group, I feel like a, there's always one in my either college or high school friend group. I always have a friend who is like a huge shot pusher. And I'm like, no, oh, no, why are we still doing this? And like, uh, they've caught on to my tactics. What are your tactics? 
to like not take the shot. And I look like I'm taking the shot and I'm not. But now they're on to me. So and they call you I'm out. In tro- yes, they call so me out. Do you feel rude not taking a shot? Uh, it depends on the person. Okay. If I know the person well enough, I'll just, I'll look them in the eye and be like, look, I'm not doing that. I don't want to feel crappy tomorrow. And then there's other people where I'm like not so close and I'm like, because mm, I'm such a people pleaser. And I'm I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't do shots anymore. I just tell people I'm not doing it. No, I'll Ugh. take a cocktail, but I'm, no not gonna, I'm not going to do your yeah. shot. <laughs> if it's someone's birthday, I'm like, okay, I'll take one. And that's how it leads down a little slope. But <laughs> I'll just be like, tequila makes me a bad person. <laughs> oh my <laughs> don't, God. Don't make me do that. Do you have a friend, a particular friend who's, Wildly good at celebrating. Ooh, Keith. Keith. <laughs> Keith is wildly good at celebrating. Keith is good, good at celebrating. He yeah. loves celebrating. If someone else is having a party, mm-hmm. he'll do whatever he can to make it the best party ever. Yeah. His own parties. Any little chance mm-hmm. to have fun. Yeah. That's his way of relaxing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Planning things. Mm-hmm. Planning little adventures. Yeah. I feel like David Deng's very good at. Oh, yeah. Recognizing mm. people's accomplishments and stuff. Yeah. Like, like he'll always show up with like a little treat or something if yeah. something's happened in your life. Yeah. Or, he mm. always tells me on my Apple Watch, good job when I finished a workout. <laughs> <laughs> right. Isn't it automatic? <laughs> no, it's not. You have to pick the pick what the response is. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be like, cute. Becky finished her workout. Yeah. It'll good be like, job. Becky was rowing and he'll be like, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> He's good. a cheerleader. He is. He's yeah. a very good cheerleader. He's, yeah. a, he's a good friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like he's good at celebrating. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And curating things. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what the big, like, for celebrations, I feel like none of us are really like, oh, we're just going to, like, sit and hang out. There's always, like, a curated mm-hmm. something to eat, something to drink, something to do, something to How do you listen curate to. your music? Yeah. Mm. I just put on a Spotify playlist. So I highly recommend if you're having a dinner party, my friend Hannah created a playlist on Spotify called Nancy Myers Coastal Grandma. I Coastal love that. Grandma. Love Coastal that. Grandma. <laughs> it is. If you want to feel like you're in a Nancy Myers movie, I probably put it on every other day. And then other than that, I just go to Spotify oh, and go. I might start doing that. It's so good. It's one of the best playlists. It's, wow. it's the best Nancy Myers playlist. There are other Nancy mm. Myers playlists out there and they are not. The vibe. This Mm -hmm. is the vibe. The whole playlist is good. That is so funny. Yeah. So I usually lean on friends that have better taste. Like Hannah has much better taste in music than I do. Zach has really good taste Mm -hmm. in music. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that someone who knows the vibes Mm -hmm. can control the music. Mm -hmm. I always feel like when you're throwing a party or a celebration, it's okay to outsource some things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the playlist. That's an easy thing to outsource to someone who's Mm -hmm. good at that. 100%. The food, just order. Just order. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> Matt is the uh, Matt's the opposite. Like, he spends, from he spends all day making it. For I know you're such a like good example. You inspire me to be a better host and invest in like party. Yeah, gotta like, be a party place. Place. Yeah, and, you like, gotta do your housewarming spread. party. Yeah, yeah. I still have many yeah. I know we only have a four person table. And, like you have, you have plenty <laughs> of seats. <laughs> Who who is, you got a couch. Should it be a dance backyard? party anyway? We can have a be- we can have a dance party. I'll yeah. make the drinks and we dance. Yeah, Love perfect. It. Yeah, dance Zach, party. Will, Zach will do the the music. The perfect. music and the lights lit. and yeah. the lights. Lit, 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 lit. And I'll make the drinks. Yeah. Easy. I love it. <laughs> and we'll get takeout. <laughs> <laughs> Down. <laughs> Down. <laughs> love it. Perfect. Okay. Speaking of system, uh, entertaining and yeah. making food. Yeah. Now we're going to play a little game uh, called Settle This For Me with some questions from Reddit. Meat in the sink or on the counter? My girlfriend and I recently found a difference in opinion on how to unpackage and work with raw meat. She thinks it's most sanitary to set the packaged meat in the stainless steel sink and unpackage it there. I think that my granite countertops are a cleaner surface area and can be sanitized better than the sink. Where do you fall? Thoughts? Sink. 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 I am Definitely sink. Meat in the sink. I feel like like things just like ooze out. It's like messy. Yeah. With poultry. There's like E. coli. There's a bunch of stuff. You want it all yeah. like as contained as possible. I think mm-hmm. unwrap in the sink, but I don't like set it in the sink. I put it on a cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Or like if on we're defrosting meat or something. Oh. I'm not gonna I'll put it in yeah, a bowl. I, w- I, w- I would put it in the sink. Yeah. Put it in, in a bowl in the yeah, sink. Yeah. In the sink. Something, yeah. I and also I feel like the they were talking about 
how porous each surface is. And I feel like they're both not going to be like holding germs, granite versus stainless steel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And with in the sink, you can just spray away all the goobers. The goobers. Yeah. 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 And it's not like you're eating off the sink. No. You have to cook it anyway. Yeah. It does have to get cooked anyway. Yeah. I would say for me, I would, it seems more sanitary to do it in the sink because you're less likely to like miss a cleaning spot. Yeah. Like I think meat and fish and poultry should all be on it should have one spot. It's you use the one cutting board and then that goes right in the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You use one set of silverware and then that goes right in the dishwasher. So you're not doing any like cross contaminating mm-hmm. mm-hmm. of anything raw. Mm. Raw. Do you guys sink. do you guys put Team your sink. um put your dishes in the sink or do you put them straight into the dishwasher? For those of us who have dishwashers. I'm a straight in the dishwasher girl. Yeah. Mm, good for Usually you. it's right in the dishwasher, yeah. Ugh, so yeah. I don't have to deal with it anymore. As long as yeah. there's there's room, yeah. Good for you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just let it all pile up into the I, sink? Sometimes, yeah. I do. Then you can't use the sink I, to defrost your meat. I've started. <laughs> so you're a counter person by default. <laughs> I've started doing this this thing where I I get so anxious and OCD about cleaning the kitchen that I have to limit myself to one time a day to clean it. Because mm. um, if not, you're just, you're just yeah, all day. day. Because otherwise I'm just, I'm constantly cleaning the kitchen. Mm. I think this started, you know, with COVID and you're always making snacks and you're always doing this and Mm -hmm. eating and doing this and that. Um, And half the time our dishwasher is full. And so the dishes would just just pile up in the sink anyway. And I didn't want to take the 10 minutes to unload the dishwasher. And so then... And it's just, yeah. So then I would just start, you know, from all the little things that you do throughout the day, stack it up in the sink. And then just after dinner, I just clean it one 300 time. 300 cups of water. One time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 300 cups of water. Exactly. <laughs> Milk cup, snack bowl, snack mm-hmm. tray, water bottles. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You just, I can't keep up. Yeah. yeah. It's a big design thing right now, actually, to put two dishwashers in the kitchen. Really? Mm-hmm. So that one is dirty, one is clean? Mm-hmm. So you always mm-hmm. have. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who has that much space? I always thought that was that just for no, I'm like, people who had shirts. like 12 Jesus. dinner yeah. parties. Mm. No, so they can keep rotating through. Whoa. I love wow. that. Mm-hmm. I unload in the morning and then put it in throughout the day. But I don't use a lot of, I will find any way to not use a plate or a fork. Mm-hmm. I'm a big, I mean, there's only two of us in the house. So I'm like, I just eat it can out of the again? thing. I'm like <laughs> scooping out of things. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't mess with touching all the things. Yeah. Although when I do cook uh, at night, Keith does laugh at the amount of silverware I use to cook. Like almost everything I use is a new set of silverware. And he's mm. like, we really, do you need that extra spoon? And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> Fresh spoons. Fresh yeah. spoons. So we're a big run at night family. We, we run at night Run too. at night and then unload in the morning. Yeah. Which is actually Back supposed to be a, um, uh, like an environmental thing. Running it at night. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it. I wonder why. Maybe people use less electricity, electricity at night. At night. Than yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so you're not overloading the, uh, yeah. the grid. Or- oh, I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I'm just not someone who likes to take unnecessary risks in case something goes wrong. And that's the same reason why it's so important to have ExpressVPN when you use the internet. It's better to be careful, especially when it's as simple, effective, and trustworthy as using ExpressVPN. Every time that you connect to an unencrypted network, like anytime you connect to the Wi-Fi in a hotel or a cafe or an airport, your online data is not secured. So any hacker that's on the same network can gain access to your personal data and even steal it. There are definitely things that I don't want other people to see when I search the internet, like my financial information or our house address and things like that. And that's why I love ExpressVPN. They create a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that a hacker with a supercomputer can't get past ExpressVPN's encryption in a billion years. Literally. I love the security that ExpressVPN offers my devices, but even more important is the peace of mind that it gives me, knowing that I'm protected. Get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free at expressvpn.com slash you can sit. That's expressvpn.com slash you can sit. Expressvpn.com slash you can sit. All right. The next one is should you tip at counter service? Like many of us, I get asked for tips at places I never used to, including Subway, Papa Murphy's, Take and Bake Pizza, my local butcher, Potbelly, Sandwiches, to name a few. Mm -hmm. My main argument, no, 
these employers have added tipping on their credit card machines so they don't have to pay their employees. In my opinion, these employees need to unionize or leave if they want more money. <laughs> I've been a server <laughs> and you definitely earn your tips. I'm not saying that someone at Subway isn't busting their ass, but to me, it's different. Mm. I've been poor, so I get the struggle. <laughs> Secondary argument. It's not consistent. You don't tip at McDonald's. My buddy. It's not a big deal. Just tip the minimum. Ask. Usually 10%. They are struggling and they work through COVID. Yeah, I mean, if you're a person and you've struggled in the past, then everyone else should also struggle, struggle. too. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's how change. Jesus. <laughs> they no. should unionize or quit. Hey, I That's mean, extreme. that person oh is God. still not yeah. getting, you know, if there's a tip thing there, is, is that true also? Can I like, is what can, what? can you guys confirm that? If there is a, a tip line on the receipt, does that mean that the employees are not getting paid the, like the full Fair amount because the they're the also amount? getting tips? Um, well, tips in, Cal- in California, tips are taxed. Mm-hmm. Mm. The only tips, well, t- cash is technically not taxed, but you are supposed to declare a certain but I'm sure amount. Does, but yeah. I would say cash is king, baby. Tip people in cash. Yeah, yeah but for like how much are their hourly wage though? I think is what she's getting to. It depends like on where if, you, there is minimum wage in California for like service workers. Yeah. So Which for somebody at, higher at the, at the pot belly or something. At the pot belly, they're probably still only making like $15 an hour, if that. Like maybe they're making 10 and then the tips that go on the receipts, those probably go into a pool that gets split. Mm-hmm. Depends. Every company is different. Mm-hmm. Technically, you're not supposed to be able to tell. Like at restaurants, employers are not allowed to tell you what to do with your tips in terms of like tipping out the other people that work there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I've never worked at a restaurant that didn't tell you what you, how much to split and mm-hmm. how much to tip out. Mm, Unless it was like a tip share. Well, I remember when I was a server, our hourly wage was like two dollars an hour or something, and then oh my your tips had to make up for the rest. And then if you didn't, if your tip tips at the end of the night didn't meet the minimum wage, wage? or whatever, then your employer had to supplement so that you would make minimum wage at least. Whoa! Mm-hmm. But our actually hourly rate was only like two dollars an hour, something like crazy. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Illinois is two seventy five. Jesus. When I worked there, wow, wow. That so it is good to tip your people. Mm-hmm. So yeah. to get to minimum wage, like the number of tips that you guys have to get is pretty substantial. I mean, in Illinois at the time, minimum wage was seven twenty-five, so it wasn't that. Yeah, uh, it was the same. For yeah, me. Okay. it wasn't that high. Um, but yeah, it just it also had more to do with like then how much you owe in taxes at the end of the year because mm. typically when you're paid that way, then your tips are not taxed. Oh, so you have to make sure you have enough money when tax times comes to pay the taxes back. Mm. Yeah, kind of what you require. Whereas in like California, service workers typically get their tips taxed. Mm. And I didn't know, I was asking the guy at the weed store once because I'm so, or not I'm, I didn't buy that much weed when I was in Chicago. <laughs> but you're so used to using cash that when it comes yeah. time to pay with a card, I'm like, oh, I told the guy at the weed store, I was like, oh, I don't have um, cash. Is it better for you? I can go get the cash. He told me it's all, t- it's all taxed, taxed yeah. like crazy. He's like, yeah. you should see what my like paycheck, the little like side looks like. He's like, every part of it is taxed because marijuana is so I believe, um, yeah. regulated, regulated. Wow. Whoa. I didn't even thought about but typically that. tipping cash, I would say is the best mm-hmm. route. I mean, I tip everyone, but Very I'm also too. in a position to tip everyone. You yeah, know what I mean? tip everyone. Yeah. If there's a tip line at, at like a pot belly or something, yeah. I'll, I'll say $2 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I almost oh, think of it as not? like a bartender, uh-huh. you know, like if you're at a bar and you order a drink and they make you a drink, you're going to put a couple dollars on the counter, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think of it as a similar thing where, um, what if they're just giving you a water, if they're just giving me a water, then I, ho- I hope I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> 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 but if I, if I bought a bottle of water or something like yeah. that, <sighs> then maybe no a water bottle. Then, I, I mean, know what is the 11? line? What yeah, is that's the what line? I think. That's what the question gets down yeah. to is like, what is the line? What is I, maybe if something has been made or a service yeah. has been provided, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just like rung up, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, like at at a meat counter or something. You know, I would if if they just handed me something, then maybe no. But if they had cut the meat or weighed it or something like that, I don't know. 
Yeah. It, it really depends. What about 7-Eleven at yeah. the hot dog machine and they had to make the hot dogs and then they prepared <gasps> it for you and gave mm. it to you? Mm. Service. <sighs> Service. Hospitality. Yeah. But I do, I, I feel this question because I ask myself that every time. There's a tip line um, and I think to myself, how much do I tip here? Like what is, it, was it good service? Yeah. You know, because you, you, that's really the question is, is like when you're tipping, you are tipping for service, correct? And it's, it's not just a given. Like, I don't know what these people are making. I don't know if they're living off of tips. Um, so generally I just, just lean on the side of tipping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it also, <laughs> the way that person phrased unionize or leave um, <laughs> makes me think they lean politically a very specific way um, where it's on the onus of the employee to control you know. the wage that they get. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like that's not, that's just not how not it Not everybody works. can control it. <laughs> that's just, not. They're, they just, they're just happy to have a job. Yeah. yeah. And to be like, well, that employee should just leave or unionize. Well, yeah. maybe that employer should just pay more. Yeah. Pay a living wage. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, kind of nickel and diming people at a coffee shop is wrong. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was at a restaurant uh, a couple weeks ago and they had it said on the menu it was like you can say no if you don't want to have this 3% included and Zach and I and my sister had just sat down and the people behind us were getting upset at the server because he didn't read the like fine print on the menu that 3% of the bill um, was going towards the employees like health insurance and like mm-hmm. benefits. And like, mm-hmm. he was getting upset at the employee and was like, why this and that? I'm like, this is very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, why, oh. why are we like going after the individual and like getting upset if it's something, I mean, if you're upset with it, like, I guess you could take, ask for it to be taken off, but like yelling at a server for it's something like it's that 3%. was, it's, oh, yeah. that was like three clearly pre-tax. stated. <laughs> yeah. It was very uncomfortable. I was just like, yeah. yeah. Eat your food. Be quiet. <laughs> and trying, trying to explain that to somebody as their server, mm-hmm. like as the person who, well, yeah, this is paying for my healthcare. Yeah. Um, I'm, I understand if, if, if you do not want to be a part of, you know, this, this, then, uh, I, I will take it off of your bill, sir. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah. then if they just want to argue about it, that's a that's a different yeah, yeah. A different matter altogether. That's how you know you weren't getting twenty percent anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. true. Yeah. Tip what you can. Tip what you can. Tip yeah. what you can. Tip what you can. It's good. But also, like, if you're going to go out to eat, like, make sure you can and tip. tip. Yeah, that's good advice too. Yeah. Next one, pronunciation challenge. <laughs> oh, <Ooh. Uh-oh. laughs> okay. Do you pronounce? This has to do with orthography and phonetics, right? So how it's spelled versus uh-huh. how it sounds. Yes. Okay. So does PH sound different than an F? So like Sophie versus Sophie. Sounds the same, right? Sounds the S-O-F-I-E same. S-O-F-I-E versus yeah. S-O-F-H-I-E. Sophie versus Sophie. Yeah, Sophie. Fish the fish, fish the band. Yeah, fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to think though. Is there a difference or no? Do you guys remember when no. Zach when Fat was a thing? P H A T? The uh, brand. Yeah. 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 So did you pronounce that any differently? Fat? Baby fat? fat? Pafat. Oh, I would have said fat. Foam. <laughs> yeah. Fat. Yeah. Fat and then fat. No, I think I say P H and F the same. Yeah. Is it like, I feel like from a long time ago it was more aspirated probably like f- like sounded longer. I don't think people do do that anymore, you know? Or maybe it's like, because um, I know Sophie is uh, French. French. And and so maybe in certain languages it's pronounced differently, but maybe in ours it's it's, pronounced, it's just Sophie. Like but that sounds like what the vowel is, or right. the stress on the vowel Sophie? is different than yeah. Sophie. Yeah. Sophie. Mm-hmm. Sophie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think that necessarily changes. I think we do them the same. They're the yeah. same. Yeah. They're the same. They're the same. The I four of us so. in this room <laughs> meeting <laughs> the same. same accent. <laughs> same accent. Yeah. Bring out the dancing <laughs> lobsters. <laughs> oh, I love. Okay, I haven't read this one yet, but I'm very excited about the title. <laughs> animals as smart as humans? Yeah. I think that certain animals are just as emotionally intelligent and socially intelligent as humans. He does not. The main ones we talked about were orcas, 
crows and dogs. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think either socially or emotionally are as smart as humans. They are not as purely intelligent as humans, though. I repeat, they are not as purely intelligent as humans. Mm. I mean, people study like dolphins and whales and they said they're really smart. Smarter people than us have yeah. said that those animals are yeah. smart. There have to be some animals <laughs> that are to... smarter than the dumbest people. Yeah. yeah. Think about humans right. as babies. We're also yeah. like helpless. Like our parents are responsible just to make sure that we don't get into trouble and we don't like fall off a cliff, blah, blah, blah. There's mm-hmm. animals that like are popped out of their They're good egg go. or their parents' bellies and just like know what to do <laughs> instinctually. Yeah. Yeah. I do the yeah. the argument for social and emotional intelligence. I think that y- th- there are different ways of being intelligent for mm-hmm. sure, even you know, as humans. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think animals are similarly probably some animals are very emotionally intelligent. You know, dogs can sense certain emotions in mm-hmm. people. You know, that mm-hmm. to me means that they are way more emotionally intelligent than we are. Mm. Um I think they can they have like more sensory things where they can get different information than we can mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. like their senses are heightened right like especially yeah sound and like smells and stuff like that so they have extra information that they can use to inform mm-hmm, mm-hmm, those mm-hmm. things and then social intelligence that you know there are Animals that travel in herds or family units. and mm-hmm. Do you know what a family of crows is called? Hmm. Murder. A murder. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. A murder. murder. A murder. I want to know what prompted their conversation. Like, what was this this guy? He was like, no, animals are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> They're dumb. They just eat and poop. <laughs> 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 like, who's, who's looking at animals being like, you're a moron? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, they're smart. <laughs> Becky requests more information. I request more information mm-hmm. about this one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, socially smart. Everything socially is basically a construct, right? So yeah, they're not going to be the same as humans in that way. They have their own construct. Yeah, mm-hmm. and maybe the orcas that are on their podcasts are talking about how stupid humans are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, they're that's what they're the saying. Ocean. That's actually when you hear <laughs> yeah. them, that's yeah. actually what they're saying. There's yeah. actually a broadcasted podcast called <laughs> You Can Swim With Us. <laughs> you Can Swim With Us. Can you please say that again louder for those who didn't hear it? Because that was so funny. The, oh, the whales. They have their own podcast. It's called You Can Swim With Us. Yes. <laughs> swim fan. It's P-H-A-N. <laughs> so here's our last settle this okay. for today. Does hummus stink? Mm. Some people question. hummus smells really gross, and some people it smells really good. Mm. So does hummus stink? Just plain hummus? No, I can't smell it. I don't oh. think I've ever like been like, oh, I can smell that hummus, unless it is like a flavored hummus, like garlic hummus or oh, roasted red pepper hummus. But plain chickpea, yeah, and tahini hummus. Right, tahini? Yeah, yeah. Tahini, yeah. I think it smells I mealy. Smell I wouldn't it. say it smells bad, but I wouldn't say it also smells good. So I'm neutral. <laughs> neutral. Smells, okay. Neutral. Well, neutral. Neutral. Mealy. Yes. It I feel like mealy. mealy is a consistency. Yeah. It's funny that you smell a consistency. You are correct. I don't know how to explain <laughs> the smell. It just smells like herby, mushed chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, yeah. it's not like I'd send a mineral. It smells as if yeah. it would. How you expect it to feel. <laughs> mealy? Mealy. Mealy. So yeah. mealy. I can get where where the challenge comes in with this, okay. but I think I just like hummus so much that it smells good to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like it's kind of the same with a lot of fermented things. They, they kind of have that weird, it's kind of like a smell behind the smell. A funk. Yeah. Mm. But it still tastes really good. You really want it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where do, smell is such a, um, you know, like you're raised with certain smells. If you're raised with hummus and you think that it smells delicious, yeah, you know, or you could, you could be allergic to garlic or something and, and then you smell hummus and you're like, oh no, I can't. So no, it doesn't smell. No, no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Plain hummus does not smell. 
It has like, yeah, a smell, but not a strong smell. It doesn't smell. stink. It doesn't stink. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stink. <laughs> it's it's plain. Uh, Feeling very stink. strongly. No, I think of like briny things stink. <laughs> like that stinks. Getting something like, I don't know, cooked broccoli. Steamed broccoli. These anchovies. Smells like <laughs> anchovies. Sulfur. Stink. Yeah. Hummus? <laughs> Stinker and the animals are dumb person need to <laughs> link chat. up. They need to link up. <laughs> they need to find each other on LinkedIn. <laughs> and have, Specifically. Have a debate or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, with that, guys, mm-hmm. we want to thank you for tuning in to this episode this week. So uh, you can swim with us. You can, you can swim, swim with, with us. us. Um, be sure to like and and subscribe, please. Uh, our email is you can sit with us pod at gmail.com. Be sure to send questions to there. Um, make sure you are washing your hands, peeing after sex, wearing your mask, and being kind to one another. Be kind. Be kind. Give out some compliments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give everybody compliments. Yeah. <laughs> Find someone in your life today to give a compliment to. Yes. Pass it on. And with that, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.